this is Rosalind Khan from Chow Entertainment, living your best life. Oh my God, this is such an amazing opportunity we have here. I'm with Chow Entertainment, living your best life. It's KXLA Chow Entertainment every Tuesday in Los Angeles, and that's on 11 a.m. We also have it in Las Vegas at KGNG. We are on Amazon Fire and Roku TV. Today, we have the delight and pleasure of meeting a distinguished, refined individual. His name is Frank Graves. Frank Graves is a professional singing, had a professional singing career that took off with the soul group, the Dynamic Soul 7, who performed throughout Kentucky and Ohio. And he was mentioned in a Sacramento News and Reviews columnist, Buzz Norton states, Graves has great pipes, and if you dig, Luther Vandross, you'll like his to my lady in 1992. The Sacramento Sutter town, Tim McHarg describes Graves' music as a soulful ballad with Graves' smooth vocal and upbeat synth sound, gives the song to my lady a professional contemporary feel. Frank was the United Kingdom International Uni Song Contemporary Award winner, first place for the best writing musician in solid rock. Say hello to the crowd. Hello. <laughs> oh my God! It's awesome to have you here with us. Thank you. I know it's Thank a you. hot one here in the valley as, as, oh. we're, as we're recording this today. <laughs> it's only going to get hotter. But I yeah. understand you had a big break that that came from the military. Tell me, did you have to go out and fight wars, and then as the booby prize, they, they allowed you to go into music? How did that work? <laughs> no, they didn't allow me to do any of that. No, it was um, after I finished up my military career. After I finished up my military career, I uh, went and uh, I ran across an old friend of mine from my high school. And I was playing um, trombone at the time, brass. And uh, he wanted to know if I was still playing because I had a group called uh, the Dy Dynamic Soul 7. Uh, and uh, I, he wanted me to come down and audition uh, for them. And so that's what I done was I went down and audition and uh, they liked it. And so I became uh, part of this group called Dynamic So 7 out of uh, uh, Richmond, uh, Winchester, Kentucky. Now you, got, you had mentioned that your friend had some professional music to his background. Tell me about, a little bit about his stuff. What was his name? Yeah, his name was Dwayne Clayton. Uh, Dwayne uh, was the, uh, uh, one of the lead trumpets for uh, Ohio players. And uh, he also was the lead trumpet player for the Dynamic So 7. And so he, uh, uh, we played in the same band uh, at Dunbar High School. And so it was, uh, uh, when we ran into each other, he asked me about the possibility of coming and playing with them. And so that's, uh, then that's what I done, was I went and auditioned and you got also, accepted. You also played in some special plan for the military. Tell me about that experience. The uh, military thing came about um, some years afterward. Um, uh, it's after I got back and I was um, uh, just returning um, back to my, I guess you call my normal life. And uh, I was playing one night, uh, I had uh, already been writing and doing a lot of the music and then uh, one night I was playing in a, a little club down in uh, Lancaster, California. And uh, some of the individuals there that night uh, were uh, there, they were from the 562nd Air National Guard Band out of China Islands. And so they, uh, talked to me afterwards and wanted to know would I come and audition for uh, their band and uh, that's what I done uh, and then became a part of them uh, a little later on. Now how long did this band last for? This was like almost 12 years. Uh, we, uh, we became the first uh, combo R&B band and uh, we played uh, just everywhere with Vandenberg, uh, Phoenix, Delaware, um, just wherever they needed us to play, and and it our name became uh, popular uh, as the 562nd Combo R&B Band. Now, did you ever make it down to Camp Pendleton? No, uh, uh, unfortunately, we didn't get there, but we had a lot. But now, what we did do, uh, we played a, a major July 4th concert at the at the La Jolla at the uh, park there in La Jolla. Uh -huh. And uh, we had uh, approximately 15,000 people. Wow. Yeah, and uh, 
we started doing the R&B show <laughs> after doing all of the traditional songs. And uh, we quit to go back to the traditional <laughs> song and the crowd just went berserk and they wanted the R&B show to continue. Well, you always said you're one person who really feeds the crowd and gives the crowd what, what they want and that's so important our musical yes. entourage. Yeah, you know? it's, <laughs> it, was, it was great. Now, from there, you came upon a documentary with Smokey Robinson in 2021 on Netflix. Can you tell us how that, that came about? Uh, actually, the uh, individual, his name is uh, Roman Johnson. Uh, Roman uh, is the uh, lead key keyboard player for um, Stevie Wonder. Uh, yeah, obviously, Stevie has some great musicians, and uh, so he... Uh, uh, I, I've been working with Roman on different projects, uh, doing a lot of my music. And so Roman, uh, uh, we was working on a track and um, he uh, wanted to know if I would write words to this particular track. And so I went home and I wrote it and I came back and it was a song called, uh, I, I, I named it uh, Loving You. And uh, it was pertaining to uh, the women of this world, the uh, all of the things that women do, you know, it, uh, with all of the to, to give them all of the accolades that they need, they should have, and so that's that's what we done. And uh, so in the process of uh, finishing it up, they liked it so much that they wanted to put it on the uh, on the track, put that that song on the track for the documentary for Claudia Robinson. Wow, that mm -hmm. sounds like a beautiful thing. Well, it's, it's about time to take a little break, and uh, if you missed out on any of this, this, this is Frank Graves here. He told us about his beginning in the military, on the military band, how a high school friend opened up those doors, how we went on many stages with that, and we just finished talking about his documentary with Claudette Rogers Robertson. Hold tight, and we'll be right back. Hello everybody and welcome to the Oakland Aviation Museum. This is a special museum for aircraft, historic GA, general aviation, and World War II airplanes here at the Oakland Airport. As you can see, it's now open seven days a week through the summer. And I wanted to show you around. This is an indoor and outdoor museum. This is the outdoor area. Over there we have a flying boat. There's not too many of those left. Here you can see the Douglas KA-3B Sky Warrior. Really cool. Let me take you inside the hangar. I'd love to show you around a little bit inside this hangar that is home to so many wonderful planes. This here is a favorite of most people. It's a P-51 Mustang. Lots of red and blue read up on it. See the helicopter back there? It's always great to look at all the historic aircraft that you can't see in too many places. I'll just take you through this hangar right here. This is an Araka. A lot of people got their start or had their first flight in this plane. Now we use more Cessnas. Come over here. This is just a great place to come and visit to bring your family. As you can see, the ground is like a little runway. Like a kitty hot corporate. And of course, that's the Wright Brothers. That's the Wright Brothers plane. There's always an exhibit in here. We have some engines. And this is the gift shop where you can get all of your favorite aviation goods. Thank you, and we hope to see you soon. Welcome back. This is Rosalind Kahn with Cal Entertainment. We have with us the lovely, the amazing Frank Graves telling us about the world of music with the R&B. And in case you missed out on the first part, he started in the Army. And from the Army, he went out to play with some high school friends. And it was from there he went on to be in a documentary. Now, this time, we're going to talk about the Freedom Celebration Concert in the Amphitheater in Palmdale. Tell us about this special one here. It became, uh, I had been playing for the, um, for the uh, Palmdale um, Amphitheater, or um, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, Palmdale Playhouse. Uh -huh. uh, I had gotten, a, uh, the young lady that started out there, her name was Miss Dave McAllister, and uh, 
I had been asking her to give um, my band and an opportunity, uh, my band Chemistry Sounds, an opportunity to play that. So I wanted to do both R&B and gospel. And so they said in the future they would take a good look at it because I didn't have a good name. I didn't have a, a big name at the time. But uh, for whatever reason, a band canceled and they called me up and asked me, hey, would you still be interested in doing a show? And I told them, yes, and I told them I would do, uh, uh, they wanted to know what was the format, and I told them I'd do Motown. And uh, they said, oh, well, that would be just up our alley. So uh, that's what I done, and that from that night, I had a sellout, and it was a hit from then on. I did a lot of uh, Motown and gospel shows there for about, for about uh, eight years, and straight in a row, wow. and it became a, a good wholesome name for the for the group, or uh, for the Playhouse, and so the Playhouse uh, right after that uh, decided to give me an opportunity to be the headliner uh, for 2018. Uh, they call it a Freedom Celebration, and uh, they uh, we had a, a little group in front of us from out of L.A. I don't remember their name, but uh, but the crowd wasn't really there yet. But anyway, as it turned out, we had a sellout. We had about uh, 7,000 people in attendance, and uh, we brought the house down. <laughs> no, that sounds amazing. Now, you were tell telling me something different about how they worked with crowd control then and now. Can you share that with us? The crowd control is the same, pretty much security everywhere. They, um, But with the amphitheater, it's much, much better because it's a uh, it's on a, a, a wide open field, a grassy field. Uh, people bring their chairs and things like that, and they pretty much monitor everything pretty well. And uh, uh, couldn't ask for a better setting. Uh, just a beautiful place uh, get to play. Uh -huh. Sounds just like it's just like heaven. I was, I was talking about <laughs> they didn't wait for the crowd. They just went ahead and began. They they did not wait for the crowd. As a matter of fact, they said uh, give it um, ten minutes, but the crowd was still. Uh, around the uh, amphitheater uh, trying to get in. So they decided that we needed to go ahead and go with that. Wow. Uh, Quite different than what we experienced today. Now, yeah. you had some amazing players that were playing with you. Tell me about some of the, the support people that you had working with you on that. Um, I had uh, uh, my bass player been with me for approximately 20 years now. And his name was uh, Ron Rosebear. He was the uh, formerly of the Rolls Royce, uh, the bass player. And then I had um, uh, Micah Hands, uh, who uh, is the uh, keyboard player who played for the Commodores and for uh, the Delphonics. I had uh, Ronnie Kaufman, uh, who was the lead percussionist and drummer for uh, uh, Gap Band. And then there was Lex Steffner. Uh, Lex was uh, one of my rhythm guitar players. Uh, he was from France. Uh, and then I had James Loon. Uh, who had played with me a number of times. He was the Grammy recipient of the uh, Grammy Award, uh, lead guitar player for the late James Ingram. And of course, here lately, or late, the last show I had on my uh, on stage with me was uh, Mr. Victor Orlando, uh, the uh, Grammy nominee as the uh, percussionist. Sounds like you had some pretty talented people. Did they just fall into place, or how did, how did you get these wonderful group of people all together in one place? Yeah, because um, you have to have uh, somebody that you can go to that's uh, the lead person. And Ron became my lead person. And then I forgot the fact uh, to mention my uh, my main keyboard player, uh, Richard uh, Turner, Jr., they call him. They call him the prodigy in 88 Keys. Oh, my God. <laughs> if you heard him play, you understand why they call him 88 Keys, you know. And uh, so it was like... Uh, they, uh, I call him up, uh, tell him that uh, we got a show coming, and then uh, from there, uh, they get the musicians, they practice wherever they got to practice, and I get my vocalists together, and we practice, and then when we come together, it's showtime. Oh, that just sounds beautiful. That sounds beautiful. You know, there's one other thing I wanted to ask you. You mentioned something about Stevie Wonder. Uh huh. And you had a performance on the Humanitarian Foundation in 2001. Can you tell us about that one? That was a call that came in to uh, a different group. And so uh, they asked me would I um, 
be the lead singer for the show or the performance. And when I heard the name Stevie Wonder, obviously it was like, yes, you know, I'm going to get to do something uh, for the, his program. And uh, it's a humanitarian type thing for Stevie. Uh, he still is a part of all of that. Uh, he has a lot of programs, a lot of programs that people probably don't even know anything about. And so he, uh, um, I'm just, I'm just glad that I had an opportunity to do it, and and uh, we did that, and it was uh, it was just a great setting. Mm -hmm. Wow! So you were raising money for his foundation for his mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Wow! That that sounds like heaven. Now you've done a lot of things. What is up and coming next for you? What I was just finished up was uh, uh, I just finished up the uh, I got became the uh, front cover person for the. Uh, Hollywood Weekly Magazine. Uh, that was that to me uh, is awesome. I mean, to make a uh, the front cover of a major magazine. Uh, I don't care who you are. It's it's just one of those things where you just uh, you, you you just walk around in a different mode. Uh, it just gives you so much um, energy. You know, right, you right, you're right. ready. You're ready for the next level. And as they would say, I'm going to say that this here was like at the bottom of the mountain, but I have other mountains to go. Wow. Now you said people, that is, I love it. You said people can follow you just at Frank Graves, Frank Graves on all your social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Yeah, yeah they, can, uh, they can go to uh, Instagram, Facebook, obviously. But uh, if they want to look at uh, what I'm doing or uh, all of my pictures, you can go to frankgraymusic.com, and that should be like get you right there. And then also, uh, if they go on my Facebook, uh, you're gonna hear it, uh, a lot of posts from uh, the radio station, the M W M N Radio, out of Minneapolis, Minnesota. Um, I'm a part of uh, the Uniso Record uh, Company uh, globally. Uh -huh. Hi, this is John Grant with John Grant Coaching. Are you feeling depressed or anxious because you've just lost your job, perhaps a relationship? Well, you need a coach that will get to the root of the problem and give you simple instructions to follow each and every day. That's you. Call this number, 951-225-5809, and you'll be working with John Grant Coaching today. Hi, this is Rosalind Khan from Chow Entertainment here from La Jolla International Film and Fashion Sundance. And it is the 13th annual, and I saw these wonderful couple and this great gentleman. He's got a beautiful shirt. Show your shirt, man. Show your shirt. It's got a heart on it, a heart of gold. And it is just beautiful. <laughs> he and I had posed before, and he said he was up here to collect some awards or something like that. And I saw the smile on your face. Now tell me, what was it like putting this together? Uh, it was a great opportunity to be able to tell the story of such an iconic figure in fashion, in history, and in human rights. And, I mean, it, is, it was just beautiful. How did you decide to come up with it in a comic theme? Um, it was during the pandemic, well, we're still in the pandemic, but uh, there was no way of filming or going and filming somebody live or creating something. So I'm an artist. I paint and Pat had already liked some of my paintings and we have had conversations so I figured that it would be the easiest and safest way to be able to tell a story and also very unique. Wow. Now do I also understand that you had part in the artistry that was on the wall in the, in the back? Yes. Oh my god. Is this the first year? Or? No, I have been collaborating with La Jolla since 2014 and Fred has a great eye for art and so he has commissioned me to do some of the art for the Instagram walls, for the posters. The poster for this year, uh, he asked me to, to do it uh, as well. So yeah, and I'm delighted, you know, the more art that I can show, 
Oh, they, they, that's, that's absolutely beautiful. Yeah. I, I know great art when I see it as well. Thank you. I have, I have an eye for photography. I'm Thank very you. creative in, and I see good things. And so I, I, I remember something like this last year, and I'm like, you must have been part of it then. Yes. Wow. So what's next for you? On the, tell us about the award that you got. Can you show us those, those Yes. Awards? So we got uh, Best Documentary. Uh-huh. Um, Hold it up so we can see. And, and this is our Thankfully, our, I don't take anything for granted. Uh, this is our fourth year winning for Best Documentary. I, li I like to tell stories and Best Animation because, yeah, the film is not real animation and it's not where I want to be. It's moving plateaus. Right, so it's right. very like a puppet, handmade, uh, uh, fashion illustration. So I'm taking everything where it came from. I wanted to have a very uh, couture, if you like, feel like you can see the work not an animation real animation doesn't have it but i wanted to give it a more human feel to it so next we want to tell fashion history for kids oh, beautiful. yeah I, I think the future generations are kind of like losing touch with the world um, we're moving way too fast and we tend to forget who came before us and I tell stories and I love fashion so I thought that telling stories about fashion and history for kids is a great way to connect with the world oh, that, is, that is fantastic I, I'm just really impressed as, as a Latino and all the wonderful things that you've been able to combine and do in, the, in my past history I used to work in Spanish language media as a salesperson yeah. And it's just so wonderful to see you recognized for so many talents. Uh, and, the, and the vision that you have of bringing the culture and the community yeah. to overcome racism and things yeah. like that. How can people follow you? Uh, they can follow me on Instagram. And believe me, it works. Uh, on their Fred, the producer of this festival, and I created a character. His name is Max Vogue, like the magazine. Uh -huh. And that's how Pat found me on Instagram. And oh, that's how other beautiful people like uh, Jean-Paul Gaultier and um, uh, Jody Watley, I don't know if you remember her, like all those people follow Max Vogue because Max Vogue is this culture healer, if you will. He's somebody who's friends with everybody and he tells stories. So, so that's our social media handle. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, I'm quite the storyteller myself. I've been on the TEDx stage not once, yeah. twice, three times. I'm a humanitarian, and they say my greatest gift is telling stories. It is a great, it, it feels beautiful to tell stories. No, definitely. So, my show was on KXLA Chow Entertainment out of Los Angeles. We cover all Los Angeles, all the way from North Ventura County up to Victorville, out to the desert, down to Oceanside here in San Diego. And we're also in Las Vegas at KGNG. That's 26.8. We're on Amazon Prime TV. And we are on Roku TV. And I myself am going to Egypt in August. I'm going to visit a diplomat. So if you know anybody who wants to get their message out to the world in Egypt, I know a media yeah. mogul who can help make that happen. And we'll talk about that afterwards. But it's been a pleasure and honor. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for, you for taking, taking a few minutes out. As Absolutely. As it's my pleasure. Hi, this is Rosalind Khan with Chow Entertainment, living your best life. I saw this man on the platform. I saw him on the stage at the La Jolla International Film and Fashion Show. It was with grace and ease that James Phillips was helping these ladies show their fashions off. And I find out he's not a fashion man, he's a hairstylist? Oh my god, so tell me, how does, how does hairstyle go with making women's dresses look nice? So, it all falls hands in hand. The look starts at the top and works its way down. Work its way down. We always start at the top of the hair with the woman with the hair. So I love hair. I've been doing hair since I was seven. So now I'm the ripe age of 42. And hair creation with my boss that I'm here with now for the film festival. Her uh, her actual movie is called Visitor. Visitor is a, a movie of film and fashion into one. So we took the time today to do master hair pieces and hairstyles to go with the dresses. And the dresses are one of a kind. So I had to take good care of the hair and the dresses all in one. So that's why she caught me taking care of the dresses more on the red carpet because I've already taken care of the hair. Yes, yes, that was me. That was oh, me. Reconstructing her hair because it fell. Yeah, that was me. So you like my hair? I love your hair. The shortcut is amazing. I would do a little tight little curls and make it even even more poofier. It would be gorgeous. It would be so gorgeous because the color is already there. It's, it's, it's the, the heat that's yeah. flattened it. You should have seen it when it... 
I was not ready for the seat, and dressed in all black is not helping, but I'm making it look good. Well, you do make it look good. Thank you. Thank you. I'm trying to do that, no. one head at a time. Are you based out of LA? Or? I am based out of LA, on Los Angeles. I live in Canoga Park. We are neighbors. We could have parked this together. Yes, we could have. Oh my gosh, I live in Los Angeles. You can even see my show in LA. It's uh, called Living Your Best Life Every Tuesday. I'm going to be watching it now, from now on, because now that I know about it, I'm watching it, of course. Oh my God, it's on Tuesday, 11 a.m. on Show Entertainment, mm -hmm. KXLA, we're in Las Vegas. In case you have any friends there, I'm sure you do. You're probably right. A lot. <laughs> Definitely, I'll, I'll, I'll reach out and see who do I want to help. Oh, <laughs> you are such, you're such a doll. Thank you, you so much. You Thank you. Thank you. I'm trying. How do, you, how do they follow you now? You can follow me. I'm Monet Designs on Instagram. That's M-O-N-E-T Designs, Inc. on Instagram. And you can find all my work there and get in touch with me. Fantastic. Well, you just put in the name Rosalind Khan. You can find me all over social media. Oh, I'm going to find you and follow you. You're yes, definitely. I'll see you in Hollywood. Hi, this is Rosalind Khan with Chow Entertainment, living your best life. I'm here with the beautiful Brie, a wonderful model. I think she comes from San Diego, am I not right? That is correct. I'm that is in San Diego. Yes, that, originally from the Coast. Fantastic. So what have you been doing on your platform to help out the world? So currently I am in healthcare and I'm working in behavioral health and mental health and right now I'm continuing to branch out and raise awareness right now with what's going on. Wow, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. Anything specific that you guys are doing that you can tell us about? Not right now. Nothing Not in the works as of right now. Well, fantastic. Well, where, where can they follow you at? You can find me on Instagram. That is my main platform. And you'll find me at I am Ah, well, it's truly a wonderful honor. My name is Rosalind Khan. I'm with Chow Entertainment, living your best life. That's Tuesdays, 11 a.m. here in Los Angeles. We're also on prime time in Las Vegas, KGNG and Kevin to the World. Thank you so much, Brie. God bless you. Thank you. Nurse Access Staffing is seeking experienced RN and LVNs. For more information, call us at 818-697-4484 or check us out on our website, nurseaccessstaffing.com.